In this video, we're going to express a limit or a Riemann sum as a definite integral. It says, for the following left endpoint Riemann sum given uh, ln L sub n as indicated, express the limit as n approaches infinity as a definite integral, identifying the correct intervals. So, because they say left endpoint Riemann sum, we better write that that really means that we're going to have the summation from i equal 1 to n of f of x i minus 1 times change of x. This is uh, what a left endpoint Riemann sum uh, has looked like in our previous sections and previous problems that we've done. We also need to notice that uh, f, oh, sorry, integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity for the summation i equal 1 to n of f of xi star dx, or change of x. Now we're going to use this piece of information right here the most, um, where we have this left endpoint Riemann sum. And they give us this L sub n, which is basically L sub n is this whole piece right here. It just ignores the limit. So we're going to use the uh, rules for summations that we can move this 2 over n, and we're going to move it inside here, and we're going to say that the summation of i equal 1 to n of 3 plus 2 i minus 1 over n uh, we got 2 divided by n here. So that really tells us now if we compare this piece with uh, our original piece here that change of x is n over 2. So we can say that, or not n over 2, 2 over n. So we're going to say that change of x is equal to n or 2 over n. And f of x minus 1 of x i minus 1 is equal to this 3 plus 2 i minus 1 over 2 piece. i minus 1 over n, not 2. I got a little too happy there. So then we're going to start piecing this all together. If change of x is equal to 2 over n, then that's really equal to uh, b minus a over n. And we know that xi minus 1, so that's something from previous uh, things that we've done, xi minus 1 is actually equal to x sub 0, or a, so this would be x sub 0 or a, I'm going to put a here, x sub 0 plus i minus 1 change of x. So if we know this, we can actually substitute in change of x for 2 over n here. So change of x is 2 over n, and we can write this as x i minus 1 is equal to x sub 0 plus i minus 1 times 2 over n. So we do this little substitution here, and it doesn't seem like much, but if I distribute that in such a way, you'll notice that it looks like this, x sub 0 plus 2 i minus 1 over n, which is basically exactly like this setup for f of x minus, f of x i minus 1, which tells us that x 0, or a, would equal 3. So we can say that a is equal to 3. x sub 0, which is a, is equal to 3. Well, if we know that now a is equal to 3, we can actually figure out what b is by using this uh, expression here. So we can say 2 over n is equal to 
b minus 3 over n. We multiply by n on each side. We get 2 equals b minus 3. Add the 3. So we now know our b value is 5. So we know our upper and lower bounds. So let's start writing that. Integral from 3 to 5, we now know. There was something else that we should notice. We should notice that f of I, uh, xi minus 1, this piece right here, was actually equal to xi minus 1. So let me write that out. f of xi minus 1 is equal to xi minus 1, which implies that f of x is equal to x. So when we go to write this piece out, we can say that x is our function, and we can write dx here. And so now we've taken this, uh, this Riemann sums, and we've written this in integration form.